Castles, a bitter man. Undisciplined political cadres supposed to remain loyal to their parties for life. What kind of a Jew is Ronnie Castles who fights the Palestinian cause? And given that he's a former Minister of Intelligence, are we safe? What time is it? It's question time. Hello and welcome to Question Time. My name is Mpo Tseidu. Ronnie Castro's made a name for himself as a guerrilla fighter of the ANC's armed wing, Mkonto Esizwe. But today, the veteran former ANC leader is singing a different tune. He has attacked the ANC from many platforms. This is the same man who last year asked South Africans not to vote for the ANC. But what happened to Ronnie Castro's? Why this sudden hatred for the ANC, which he spent all his life in? Today, he's part of the Patriotic Front, which is not clear if it's a political party yet, but he is my guest today. Thank you so much. Are you still a member of the ANC? No, I'm not a member of the ANC. Are you a bitter man? Not at all. I'm a very happy man. Angry at injustice, certainly passionate, but I don't think anybody who knows me and Paul mm. can say that I'm a bitter person. Mm. And uh, disciplined, well, I wouldn't define discipline in the interesting way of the introduction, incidentally, I like it, mm. but discipline isn't blind faith, uh, just Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full, sir. Mm -hmm. um, you belong to a political party organization movement on the basis of its principles, its uh, goals, its objectives. Yes. And when you come to question that organization, whether it's sticking to its principles or not, and you decide it's not, you decide there are big problems there, that it's changing course in terms of what you joined for and yep. about, then it's a question of not being indisciplined. It's a question of sticking to principles. And, well, my enemies will regard this differently, yeah. but um, that's what it's about. And I don't hate the ANC. I see the ANC as a mother. Okay. that helped to guide me in the world and make me what I am today, from the young white boy from Yeovil who didn't know very much. Mm -hmm. And that changed my life. Like a mother or a parent who goes wrong, when you yourself are an adult, you need to correct that. It's very important. So sometimes, you know, in, in, in the songs and pop art and so on, it's called hard love, tough love. Yes. When you have to say to the parent, I corner, ash, mm. you're going wrong, and declare that. And I've done that because I hope that's helped to shake up the movement, Communist Party as well, incidentally, mm. to remind people, uh, the veterans, because everybody can see things have been going wrong. And then those who are blindly loyal, disciplined, yes. who just talk in the corners, but don't have the gumption to actually raise their voices. That lets the nation down. It lets the organization down. That's what I've striven to do in short. Couldn't you change the ANC from within? I tried to. That's what I thought was possible. Yes. Um, and I began to find, both within the ANC and Communist Party, things were so sewn up, so under control, uh, in, in, in a very authoritarian way that it was a waste of time. And I saw things going from bad to worse in the country. I spoke to a lot of people on the ground, a lot of comrades in and out, those in who were unhappy. Yeah. And a lot of people I respected and respect in the party, in the ANC, in the unions, working class, salt of the earth, would say to me, Comrade Ronnie, the rot's gone too far. Okay. We can't change from within. 
Uh, you see, in the end, what is of higher authority in one's commitment isn't the party or organization. It's what that party organization serves. Okay. It's Yabantu, Jikalele, Ikaya, South Africa, all over all our people, and then the wonderful constitution and bill of rights we've created. Okay. That's what I'm committed to. That's why I speak out passionately. Let's talk time frames. When did you realize that the ANC is not the ANC that you had spent your life in? Well, the turning point was definitely Pulakwani and the way the movement I loved dealt with uh, then President Thabo Mbeki. It was rude. It was shocking. It offended people throughout the country. And those of us who there just couldn't believe what we saw. And it wasn't simply... The voting fodder, as sometimes it can be called, when people aren't thinking but have been mm -hmm. proud, who have been rolled in there mm. to vote a certain way, but it was a leadership. Uh, and under now President Jacob Zuma, who were deciding that uh, Mbeki was in the way, and uh, they wanted to see that change, and they didn't care what harm they did to the movement in achieving that. Okay. That sickened me. And then you resigned um, once uh, President Mbeki was recalled, um, which indeed raised questions. Well, you know, I can't understand how anybody under the, who served Mbeki, appointed by him in that cabinet, who took a decision with him. It wasn't just the president, it was the whole cabinet. And that decision was appealing against a certain verdict in the courts, which was eminently appealable. And later Mbeki won after he had been ditched, ditched by the organization. But on that basis, the NEC of the ANC from Polokwane and Zuma himself uh, decided that Mbeki would go, asked those of us who were still serving whether we would remain in our posts. It was quite frankly only at that meeting, uh, Monsieur Lakota and myself, who said, President as of the ANC as he was, we can't remain because we took the decision with Mbeki. So, you know, if the NEC takes umbrage with that, then we all leave. We can't remain on. Loyal or loyalty to who at that point, uh, Mr. Carlos, to President Mbeki or to what happened to no. the uh, uh, principle of democratic centralism? Well, that's fine. I abided by that throughout my time, even pre-1990. Mm. Of course, we abided by that. And in cabinet under Mandela mm. and Mbeki, when I wasn't too happy about certain decisions, you serve and you go along with that. But what we were protesting about, what we couldn't go along with then, was something that was actually anti-constitution, was actually quite illegal. Many a, 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 a judicial mind has made the point it was virtually a, a coup, a putsch. Now, if you principled, you don't go along with that, do you? But I would have expected you to say, OK, a decision was taken in Pulukwani. The delegates of the ANC decided they wanted a presidency which is led by uh, President Jacob Zuma. And therefore, um, if that NEC takes a decision, we would have to be bound by it. And uh, unless you're saying you lost the debate um, to, to convince the NEC to say, look, you either call early elections or just wait for us to, oh. to, to, to finish the term. Well, it was a fait accompli. Okay. Polokwane, I fully accepted. Okay. I might not have liked the manner and the method, mm. the behavior of the removal. It was sickening. I accepted it. And incidentally, in my defense, if I can say so, Your Worship, <laughs> there's a famous film mm. that was made in Polokwane by the Egyptian film producer. And in that film, I applaud Pulakwani in defeat. And I say this is an example of democracy. So I accepted that. Okay. And I didn't run away. Uh, what we're talking about is an illegal, unconstitutional action. Okay.
which was the one where the NEC said, and I wasn't serving on the NEC yes, by, by then, then by yes. the way, but even then I'm a member of the organisation and I was still in Parliament, happy to serve um, interim president Khalima Motlante, a very fine man incidentally. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I, on principle, there's no way I could simply accept that. Okay. And that then led to not simply myself, but 12 of us, including Trevor Manuel, yes. uh, Sidney Mufamadi, mm -hmm. Isab and Aziz Pahad, and, and a lot of others mm -hmm. uh, departing, okay. resigning. Hold the thought there. I want us to take, up, uh, take a quick break and then we'll Fine, talk about thank it. Thank you. This question time. Please don't go away. Castle Light, longer than minus 2.5. The new resellable Platinum Edition. Unlock Cold Blast Refreshment. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. Our guest today the struggle veteran, Ronnie Castros. Now, Mr. Castros, um, and then last year, you then say people must not vote for the ANC. A lot of people were shocked, disappointed. I'm sure you were called all sorts of names. Well, that's the name game, unfortunately, how mm. the ANC and our Communist Party have descended to. Instead of dealing with the issues, you're called traitor, agent. Blade in Zimandi referred to me and uh, my colleagues as uh, factory rejects. Yes. That's Nozizwe Madlala. Yeah. Um, yes, they attacked us that way. And uh, this was, in fact, a democratic right to speak up. Remember, we in a context where so many people are saying, why don't these veterans speak up? Yes. So much is going wrong. We need to hear from them. Unfortunately, very few have been doing so. Mm. And that was the context. So and that was the hard love point that okay. was being made. Were you saying people must not vote for the ANC? Uh, so who should they vote for? Or mm. should they abstain from uh, uh, voting? Which, which was your yes. angle? Well, um, I'm glad you asked because there was quite a lot of confusion in the media mm. uh, immediately, but then was cleared up. We said, you must exercise your right to vote come election day. Don't stay away. A lot of people were saying they wouldn't even bother. Mm. Use your vote. Go to that election booth. Carefully scrutinize the names, which you should be doing all along. Try and see if there's an, a, a party there that you could vote for, feeling they could help make a difference. Okay. But don't choose, we said, two parties and another. Don't choose the ANC this time. Why? they become smug and arrogant with the corruption. Let's shake them up by removing a few percent. We didn't expect that more than two or three percent drop. Don't vote for the DA because the DA happens to be a clear-cut party of business and capital. Uh, I did go on to say don't vote for a God party 
Because I don't believe that religion could should be uh, which a question. was what? And that's ACDP, okay. obviously. Um, I said there is sufficient of the smaller parties with good people. Okay. I mentioned Bantu Holomisa, who I think is a very uh, respected, responsible person. Yeah. There's Marcia Lakota of COPE. There were other parties not represented in Parliament from, uh, well, PAC or Azapo to mm. WASP, the Socialist Party. Look at these and let's try and increase the number of parties who could speak up for principle, against corruption, hold government to account, okay. etc. Uh, final point, because there were people when we went around the country who said, I corner, there's nobody there mm. that we uh, can vote for, which is why we're not bothering. We said, no, you also have the right then to just put a cross through the ballot paper in terms of none of these. Okay. And that has a better impact. It's got some impact. It's not invisible like staying away. Then you're invisible. Okay. But if you spoil your paper, that's recorded. So th that's the essence of... Did you succeed? I think we did. We definitely did. First of all, it created a debate. Yes. Which was very good for the country. Mm. People were speaking about this. Okay. Um, in terms of those who um, did not vote at all, um, that was more or less the same number okay. as in the previous election, the four years previously, but less people actually voted. Okay. So that figure went up somewhat. And then, of course, there were other parties, a uh, certain party called EFF, the Red Berets, mm. who did very well. Yeah. And that's helped to make a difference in that parliament of ours, for sure, and a positive difference. Then you, what, you then identify now with the Patriotic Front. United Front. United, United Front. Front, I'm sorry yeah. about no, that. No, that's yes. okay. Yes. Uh, we don't get bitter when people make errors like that. Okay. United Front, of yes. course, yeah. Sure, I, I strongly identify, identify with Nomza, identify with the idea of the need for a socialist workers' party, because I believe the Communist Party has failed us. So you're still is, a communist at heart? Oh, absolutely. That doesn't change okay. in terms of the kind of society, the kind of world I would like to see, okay. the kind of ideology and reading okay. that appeals to me. Uh, but I'm very sad at what's happened to a Communist Party, which had such a wonderful record in this mm -hmm. country, which I served all my life out of 50 yes. years. The mm -hmm. same with the... ANC. Okay. And so the uh, possibility of a workers' party emerging, fueled by, motivated by NOMSA, is something I support. The United Front is not that. Certainly NOMSA has given it an impetus, okay. but it's broader than a, a workers' party or even a political party. It's a front okay. to coordinate and bring together the social movements of our country, okay. the communities, the youth, the women and so on, together with Labour in right. a broad united front for a real change. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, I want you to tell us if we're safe, because you know all the secrets. Oh, God. <laughs> That's question time.
Ronnie Castros is my guest today, and this is still question time. Now, Mr. Castros, you are the former Minister of Intelligence, and you now are singing a different tune from the party that had put you in that portfolio. Are we safe? <laughs> I've been worried about the state of security and intelligence in our country for some time, and I've been saying so um, publicly. But I said to my colleagues of the Communist Party when I left Parliament and people like Jeremy Cronin mm -hmm. and the leader of the Young Communist League at the time, Buti mm -hmm. and others, mm -hmm. uh, were coming into Parliament in his case and quite a few others. I said, comrades, you must be very careful about the security aspects in this country because the way this country is going, you could see the writing on the wall, it's sliding to, towards a securocratic <coughs> sorry, a securocratic state, mm -hmm. uh, a police state. Uh, I was very unhappy with what I'd seen in the security and intelligence uh, institutions in the country. There was already a huge politicization misuse and abuse of power and resources. I had my clash with uh, some of the uh, leaders of the National Intelligence Agency back in 2005, tried to bring about reforms. One could see the police, quite frankly, getting out of hand. Okay. Um, and things have got from bad to worse since. Right. So from that point of view, there's the need for huge reform. In terms of the whole culture that drives the police force, Marakana being a dreadful example, okay. brutality, other killings, Andri Stetani, etc., and the absolute craziness, bizarreness going on in the intelligence sector, which we just saw recently in relation to what happened in Parliament. What was your take there, actually? Well, I was astonished at first that something of that was happening. Did you I right really, away know? Yes, one realised when this was going on uh, that there's been clearly some uh, intervention okay. to prevent parliamentarians and the media from, uh, from transmitting news and information. And then when we heard the unfortunate new minister uh, who's got a very difficult job being put into that position from nowhere. Uh, whether you do that with police, intelligence, the military, don't do that, President Zuma. You know, the institutions aren't going to respect that person. But to see that man giving the kind of excuse that he did, explanation, I said it was like the schoolboy coming to school and telling teacher, the dog has eaten my homework. It was such a stupid response and explanation. Okay. What did you feel about the Al Jazeera document leak scandal? About? The, the Al Jazeera. The, the Al Jazeera. Well, I think it speaks to the demoralization that is taking place within government institutions, and in this case particularly security. Okay. There's been somebody there who has done the absolute unthinkable uh, and unacceptable that must be tracked down. The person is required to face up to this and there should be punishment in terms of the law. Okay. But it stems from the rot that is there, and that rot has come from the top and it's infused the whole of government in most departments, despite the fact that I still respect some of my colleagues and ministers who are struggling to do a good job. What kind of a Jew are you who <laughs> is fighting the Palestinian cause? That's a good Jew, and I'm not alone. Uh, some 500 young Jewish people in this country recently, without my intervention, signed a statement in which they condemned Israel's injustice and brutality to the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. There are many Jews throughout the world declared as anti-Zionists uh, who support the Palestinian rights. And, you know, it's really my education within the ANC and our Communist Party over the years 
that made me understand the injustice to the Palestinian people okay. by Zionists, not essentially Judaism or Jews. Mm. Zionism, like apartheid, is a particular political doctrine of racism. And it, as apartheid was used to um, project the privileges of the Afrikaners in the first place, protect them and advance them. So Zionism has done that with the Jewish people. Like our country where our indigenous people were dispossessed of their land and the rights. Okay. This is what's happened to the Palestinian people. So, so on that basis, I support them fully. And quite frankly, I would wish to see a unitary state, which was once historic Palestine. Okay where, as the Palestinians are saying, where Jews and Christians and Muslims can live together. Okay. And there are Jews who say that as well within Israel. Okay. Do you still have the right to return to Israel? Well, all Jews have that right, but um, the Israeli regime doesn't accord every, right, every Jew that right. The ones that they don't like, if they have the temerity to say, oh, well, I want to come and live in Israel, they will say, for Burton, absolutely no way. And I know with myself, I visited there quite a few times as minister. Mm. There's no way they would even let me in okay. for a visit. Because I, I wouldn't, in fact, go to visit the Israel side, but to see the Palestinians, whether in Gaza or on the West Bank, one has to go through the Jewish authority, okay. the Israeli authority. So who do you wish wins the elections in Israel? Well, um, it's like those old South African elections, UP or National Party. Um, the only difference this time is that the so-called Arab bloc, which was based on three different Arab parties, uh, and one which was formerly Communist Party, but mainly Arab members with quite a number of Jews, these four have organized a coalition. Yes. to stand together, and they possibly could win between 12 to 15 seats. That would be a turning point in the Israeli Knesset. Ronnie Kastros, thank you very much. Dumelang and Tati. Thank you very much. And perhaps the last one. Would you go back to the ANC, yes or no? Well, um, my affinities are moving okay. to socialism. Okay, that was question time, and that was Ronnie Kastros, armed and dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome your feedback via email. Question time at sabc.co.za or chit handle at question time before you can fo follow me rather at Mpotsebi. Have yourself a wonderful time. Goodbye.